Hey everybody, this is Andre here with the Kevin Breeze channel, and in this video, we're going to be doing a comparison between the LG K22 and the LG K51. To get more information on the availability and pricing of these phones, be sure to check the link in the description. That being said, let's get started. So the LG K22 has a 6.2 inch LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 271, an aspect ratio of 19 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 81.7%. The LG K51 has a 6.5 inch LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 264, and an aspect ratio of 19.5 by 9. So the LG K51 definitely has a larger display than the LG K22, so if you're doing something like content consumption or gaming where you benefit from having a larger screen, definitely keep this in mind. On the other hand, having a smaller screen does have its advantages, especially if you're in a situation where your phone has to be more portable, then having a smaller screen definitely makes it easier to carry around. Both of these phones have water drop notches for their front facing cameras. The camera of the LG K22 is five megapixels and the LG K51 has a 13 megapixel front facing camera. So big difference here. I am not a really big fan of the water drop notch. I think phones with water drop notches for their front facing camera look older and cheaper and it makes the top part of the bezel look unnecessarily thick. I think it's a really dated look and I don't think this design is going to age as well as the design of phones that have hole punch front facing cameras instead. Now both of these phones have 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. This is a little bit small. I typically say that 64 gigabytes is a good minimum and these phones only have 32 with apps getting bigger and bigger as time goes on and the system taking up a considerable amount of space itself, it's definitely a good idea to have more storage than you think you need. Right now, each device has really basic apps on it and the system information, of course. And right now, the LG K22 has 17.32 gigabytes being used, taking up 54% of the storage. And the LG K51 has 16.56 gigabytes being used, taking up 52% of the storage. So you see here, it's really the bare minimum that's installed on these phones right now. The system alone takes up 13 gigabytes, and then a few basic apps takes about around 3 to 4 gigabytes. And just that stuff alone gets you at over half the storage being taken up. So that's really not ideal. If you take any substantial amount of photos and videos, you're definitely going to want more storage than this because that's going to be used up real quick. Now, one solution to that is to have a micro SD card to expand the storage, but that's not going to help you with larger apps. And it's not always convenient to use the micro SD card when you're just trying to take some simple photos and videos. It makes things a little bit cumbersome. So I usually prefer to have more internal storage on the phone itself. So I would say the storage is a drawback for both of these phones. For comparison purposes, they are the same. But unfortunately, 32 gigabytes nowadays is just not enough in my opinion. Now, neither of these phones have wireless charging. But the LG K51 has a fingerprint scanner and the LG K22 does not. Now that is definitely a big difference. Having a fingerprint scanner is really convenient and now it's such a common feature that I expect any phone I use to at least have a fingerprint scanner if not face unlock as well, which the LG K22 also does not have face unlock, which neither of these phones have face unlock unfortunately, but at least the LG K51 does have a fingerprint scanner, whereas the LG K22 does not. All you can do there is a pin, pattern, or password, which is pretty unfortunate. The password is a decent alternative to the pin because at least you don't have to type anything and it's a lot easier to activate if you're doing something where you can't pay as much attention to your phone as you would potentially need to do something like a password or a pin. You can usually do a pattern in your pocket once you get that muscle memory down. But with the fingerprint scanner, it's definitely going to be a lot faster than any of these options. So that's good, at least with the K51. I would say the K51 has an advantage as far as security goes. Let's test out the fingerprint scanner of the LG K51 and see how it performs. 
one more time. There we go. The fingerprint scanner on this phone is really fast and responsive. I have no complaints. I'm definitely glad this phone has one, seeing as the LG K22 does not. Now taking a look at the camera setups of these two phones, the LG K22 has a 13 megapixel rear camera and a two megapixel macro camera. The LG K51 has a 13 megapixel rear camera, a five megapixel ultra wide camera, in a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. Now on one hand, it is too bad that the LG K22 doesn't have an ultra wide camera, but it's nice that it has a macro camera. And meanwhile, it is too bad that the LG K51 doesn't have a macro camera, but it is nice that it has an ultra wide camera. I really don't know why manufacturers can't just give these phones both these days. They're really common features in most phones have at least one or the other, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me that you have to go to an extremely high-end phone in comparison just to get all of the features that are pretty commonplace these days. But at least each of these phones does have one of them. One big difference between the features of the cameras besides the obvious is that the LG K51 has portrait mode and the LG K22 doesn't. Now that is going to matter a lot to some people. I know portrait mode is a very common feature and the amount of phones I've actually used that don't have it is actually a pretty small number in comparison to the amount of phones I've used that do have it. So definitely the LG K51 already just looking at the features is going to have an advantage. Also considering that in my opinion, an ultra wide camera is more useful than a macro camera if you have to choose. Now, I personally think that phones should have both because they're really common features. Since that's not the case, I would say between the two, the phone with the ultra wide camera in portrait mode is most likely gonna have a better camera, but I'm gonna show you some examples and you can decide for yourself. So this is a picture taken with the LG K22. For what it is, I do think the quality is actually pretty good. The colors are decently balanced and the image is pretty crisp. One thing I will say about it though is that the brightness and exposure isn't really the best. The picture is a little bit dark and when you play around with the exposure knob on the camera, it doesn't really work too well. It either gets way too bright or way too dark. So when I'm taking pictures, I typically prefer, especially on these lower end phones, to not have to mess with that stuff very much. But that being said, I would say that it's decent. I wouldn't really use this for professional purposes unless I absolutely had to. But for the sake of just taking a few pictures here and there, I would say it's definitely usable. And I really don't think there's anything wrong with it in that regard. Now, this is a picture taken with the camera of the LG K51. I do think this is a lot better. I think that not only is the image a little bit sharper, but the colors are a little bit more bold in a good way and the exposure and lighting is overall a little bit better. This was taken at the same angle and you can definitely tell on the LG K22, the image is a little bit dim and with the LG K51, there's definitely a lot more light in there. So I do think that overall, the quality of the photos taken with the LG K51 is a tiny bit better than that of the LG K22. Now, do I really think there's that much of a difference? No, not really. I think they're both really decent, especially for entry-level phones. But I do think that as a general rule, the LG K51 does take better pictures. Now, I'm not going to be including the ultra-wide camera or the macro camera or portrait mode in this demonstration because those are all features that both of these phones don't have. So really, since one of them has some of them and the other doesn't, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to compare them. But if you are interested in seeing the portrait mode, ultra wide and macro cameras of these different phones, definitely be sure to check out the reviews of these phones on the channel. This is an image taken with a front facing camera of the LG K51. For what it is, again, I'm definitely impressed. Now, of course, it's not exactly the level of a super high-end phone, but at the same time, for what it is, the image is actually really good. It's decently sharp and the colors are well balanced, so I don't think there's really a problem here. This is an image taken with the front-facing camera of the LG K51. 
Now I would definitely say there's a difference in lighting. The lighting and overall colors in the picture taken with the LG K22 are a little bit more clear, but with the LG K51, there's a lot less distortion. If you look really closely, I don't know how easy it is to see on the camera here. There is a little bit of a haze in the picture taken with the LG K22, whereas in the picture taken with the LG K51, even though the colors are a little bit artificial looking, and I think that is exaggerated by the exposure in the specific picture itself. But regardless, I do think this picture is a little bit more clear. So overall, I would say that neither of them are bad, but the LG K51 definitely does take better pictures on the front facing camera than the LG K22. Now for video mode, both of these phones are able to shoot 1080p videos in both the front camera and the rear camera, which is definitely nice because a lot of these phones, especially the entry level ones, are not able to shoot video in quality as high in the front facing camera as they are in the rear camera. And especially with the entry level phones, a lot of these entry level phones are only able to shoot video in 720p to begin with. That being said, do keep in mind that both of these phones have displays in 720p, so when you shoot the videos, you're not actually gonna be looking at them in 1080p. Because these phones do have their displays in 720p, that's what you're gonna be limited to as far as viewing them. But regardless, it is nice that they're able to shoot 1080p videos in both the front and the rear cameras. So internally, the LG K22 is getting two gigabytes of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 215 processor. And the LG K51 is getting three gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Helio P22 processor. So definitely there is gonna be a bit of a difference between the performance of these two phones. I would say the LG K51 is generally gonna be a bit faster. So if you're doing a bit of web browsing and maybe some social media and more content consumption, then I would say the LG K51 might be a better option for you because with the LG K22, even though you can still do that stuff, it's not gonna run as fast. And now I'm gonna do a quick demonstration and we're gonna see which phone is actually faster. We're gonna start by opening Google Chrome. So as you could see there, the LG K22 was indeed a little bit faster on opening. Let's try out a web page and see how each of these phones performs that way. Again, as you see here, the LG K51 already loaded the page and the LG K22 is still just loading. So definitely if you're doing a lot of web browsing, social media and that kind of stuff, then the LG K51 is definitely gonna be a better option for that. Now, if you're only doing basic activities, like sending text messages, making calls, and that sort of thing, then the LG K22 is gonna be just fine. But again, there's definitely a big difference in performance between these two phones. The LG K51 is a lot faster. That being said, I still wouldn't say the LG K51 is a high performance phone by any means. I definitely think if you're doing more intense activities, like video editing and gaming and that sort of thing, then you might wanna look at a more high-end device because the LG K51, while being faster than the LG K22, is still more on the entry-level side and the processor is still not gonna be that powerful. Now for batteries, the LG K22 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and the LG K51 has a 4000 milliamp hour battery. Quite a difference there. The LG K51 is gonna get a lot more life and longevity, whereas with the LG K22, not only is it gonna have a shorter battery life, but as the battery degrades, which all batteries do, you're gonna notice it a lot more on the LG K22 because this phone has a much smaller battery, so it will degrade faster and it will die out faster as well. Now in conclusion, which one of these phones is better? I would say that with everything from specs to actual performance, the LG K51 is definitely a better phone. This phone has so much more to offer in the way of features and performance. And really, if you're doing anything besides basic activities, if you're browsing the web, consuming content, and all of that, the
the LG K51 is definitely going to have an advantage because not only does it have more features and a faster processor and a bigger battery, but it also has a much bigger screen. So when you're consuming content, you're really going to notice that difference. That being said, I don't think either of these are bad phones per se. They're just more for basic activities or in the case of the LG 51, maybe a little bit more than basic activities. But either way, neither of them are meant for very intense activities. If you're looking to do stuff like gaming and video editing and photo editing in really high levels of content consumption, then you might want to look at a more powerful device. But if you're just doing your typical sending text messages, making calls, and browsing the web and that sort of thing, then either of them are going to work out fine. It's just that the LG K51 is going to do most things a little bit better. Again, if you want to get some information about the pricing and availability of these devices, definitely check the link in the description. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.